rolling, check. Coming up on Off the Hardwood, coaching legend and Hall of Famer Lenny Wilkins talks with Paul Jones about his 40 years in the NBA as a player and coach, winning a championship with Seattle, how the NBA has changed in four decades, and coming north of the border to coach the Raptors. Welcome back. We are now upstairs, the Air Canada Centre in the Hot Stove Lounge, and uh, let's talk a little bit about the coach's playing career. Now, you, you go to St. Louis and uh, play with some really great players, uh, Bob Pettit, uh, Cliff Hagan, and you're a guard, and you're playing with some of these guys, and you're in charge of organizing all this. How difficult was that? Well, it was very difficult in the beginning because a lot of it was trial by error. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you had to uh, learn what you were supposed to do. The teaching wasn't as good as it is today. But one of the things that I picked up on right away was that I knew Bob Pettit was the key guy. <laughs> so I was going <laughs> to keep of him. Famer, right? That's yeah. right. I was going to keep him happy. And but I knew what he liked to do, where he liked to get the ball, and and I thought it was easy for me to get to those areas. You really improved as a player. I mean, uh, we, we talk about how you improved mm -hmm. through high school, how you improved through college. You do the same thing as a, as a pro player, not really being interested in the game until you pick it up. What were some of the things, Coach, that you feel led to your improvement as a player? Well, I, th I think there was a, a number of things. Uh, the one key thing was I, the half a year that I played at high school basketball, I had a great coach, a guy named Mickey Fisher, who... Uh, to me uh, was, was outstanding in his knowledge of the game. And he used to say to me all the time, he'd say, uh, well, you're like a camera. He said, you take a picture of the floor and you see it, you know where people are, and, and it makes you very effective when you have the ball. And so he would put me in situations, uh, drills, mm -hmm. where I'd have to turn right, turn left, you know, know who's on my left side, know who's on my right side, things like that. And so, it, and, and it was, it was easy. I mean, I saw the floor, I knew I could get to spots, and. So that helped me, and that made me pay attention to what people's strengths were. He would always say, you know, what can this guy do? Where should he have the ball? Things like that. And I began to think about it. Mm -hmm. And so then I started watching people very closely to see where they were effective when they got the ball. How difficult was the whole league back then? When, I mean, we're in an age now of charter travel, and, <laughs> and you know, you can be across the country in three hours. What was it like back then? playing in the league it wasn't it certainly wasn't the glamour that it is now well it really wasn't uh, in fact my first year in the NBA there were eight teams the very next year we had nine teams uh, the year two years later we had 12 teams but you knew everybody and so it, it made for some very difficult games because we were playing each other five six seven times and tempers would flare and mm -hmm. so forth also when you first came in as a rookie at least uh, they didn't welcome me with open arms because you were taking somebody's job, a right. friend's job. Where today, you want to help that player make his transition as quickly as possible because you know that that player can help you. Uh, at that time, the, the league was a little bit different too. Uh, mm -hmm. There were uh, probably on most teams uh, two Afro-Americans and no more. Uh, the, the Celtics were unusual because they had like three mm -hmm. or, or four. but. Uh, in the cities we played, uh, the, it was difficult too because you couldn't eat in some of the restaurants. You know, uh, they uh, weren't uh, very tolerant of uh, minorities, mm -hmm. and, and so you felt that all the time. And uh, but uh, we continue to play. We continue to work hard to improve things, and uh, the league got better, bigger. Uh, we got better coaching as time went on, uh, you know, but I had an opportunity to play against some great players like we talked about Bob Cousy. Right. Uh, you know, I, I can remember as a rookie stealing the ball from him <laughs> <laughs> and referee blew the whistle, you know, and I... You're not supposed to do that. Yeah, I said, I said to him, I said, you know, that was a clean steal. And he looked at me and, and all earnest and said that, uh, oh, you can't take the ball off of Bob Cousy. <laughs> 
Oh, Michael Jordan before his time. Uh, Coach, you, you talk about uh, the difficulty um, uh, back then, and tell me about some of the changes you've seen and how they've evolved. Well, there are a lot of changes today uh, in, in that uh, uh, we have uh, many more players today who have tremendous athleticism. Uh, back then, you, you'd have three maybe on a team. But has that been the biggest change, the athleticism? The, the athleticism has uh, one of the big changes, okay? Yeah. Playing facilities are incredible today. Mode of travel, mm -hmm. all right? I mean, we'd have to get up and catch the first plane out. I mean, you had to make reservations and everything. And you had to stand in line to get your tickets. You had to wow. get your bags checked, wow. all that kind of stuff. You, you ever talk to your guys about that? Yeah, uh, they, they wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> they, they wouldn't even understand it. You know? And we, were, we didn't have first class seats. Right. We eventually got to that. But uh, so you see these big guys crunched up in these little seats. Uh, it was, so everything has changed for the better. The playing conditions, travel, uh, you know, uh, their coaching. Um, facilities, mm -hmm. everything. You, you go from St. Louis to Seattle and you're actually a player coach in Seattle. How did that come about, becoming a, a, a player coach? Well, you, you know, um, in St. Louis what happened was the I was with the Hawks for eight years and the franchise was sold to Atlanta. Right. And we had a contract problem and I wouldn't sign the contract they offered me. And back then you, there wasn't anything as free agency they still had an option on your playing rights. So I was traded to Seattle because uh, I wouldn't sign the contract with the Hawks. And after being with Seattle for one year, they fired the coach and the general manager wanted me to be a player coach. Uh, you know, and I told him, I said, you gotta be crazy. <laughs> you know? And he said, well, you're like a coach anyway on the floor, you run the show, you know who should have the ball, you know, you do all these things naturally. Uh, we think it would be a good idea. And he was pretty persistent about it. So eventually I relented and figured I had nothing to lose. I might as well try it and see. Now, you go from player coach to just coach uh, a little while later, but you also had another play, player coach experience somewhere else in the league. Yeah, I was, um, I was a player coach in Seattle for three years, and we uh, got new uh, uh, general manager came in and so forth. and. And at that time, they felt that uh, I should do one or the other. Mm -hmm. And I told them, fine with me, I'd just soon be a player because you don't pay coaches enough for this aggravation. Right, right, right. And, and so once I resigned to be just a player, I got traded. <laughs> and I was traded to Cleveland, where I was for a couple of years and had a great experience there as a player. And then a friend of mine who owned the Portland Trailblazers wanted me to come back and coach them. So I decided, you know, I had gotten a taste of coaching. But that. you still wanted to play, though. Well, not really. No. I was thinking, you know, I, all right, maybe I'll just make the transition to coaching. And so uh, once I agreed that I was going to go back and coach, and I told Cleveland I wasn't going to come back as a player, the Trailblazers got my playing rights, acquired them from Cleveland, and then asked me to try it for a year, be a player coach. My last two years in Cleveland were good years. I mean, I averaged about 20 points a game and shot 80% from the foul line. So it wasn't like you saw a noticeable dip in what I was doing. All right, well, long before there was a point guard, we just heard about how the coach set everything up on the floor. Not so specialized. When we come back, we'll talk more. And I think the wrong thing sometimes to do is you struggle a little bit and everybody wants change, everybody wants to get rid of the coach, get rid of the players, you know. And I don't think that you can jump to those kind of conclusions. 